So we lay our hands to wash. Come on, help me. Holy name, you deserve the glory. And the honor. So we lay our hands to wash. Holy name, you deserve the glory. And the honor. So we lift our hands to wash. You deserve the glory. And the honor. So we lift our hands to wash. As we lift you, holy name. You deserve the glory. So we left our hands to wash as we left your holy name. Jesus, Jesus, we left your holy name tonight. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we're here for tonight. I want for you to open the Bible with me in Exodus. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Mandy, to pull it out of the spot. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm not speaking about this, but we, some. Majority of the time we say thank you, worship team, but the truth is if I have to put a name in what's happened up here is every thank you, uh, music ministry, because all of you are worship, Amen. or all of you are worshipers, and then sometimes because we talk that way, we think the worship is this and the platform, and the truth is it's not. You know, and uh, <clears throat> we just went to a church with Adam, it was a black church in Paducah, we love it, and uh, but one of the things that they, they were asking those things, they were asking a question, what do we do with people whenever they, they we, we know that they need to be in service and worshiping. And, uh, and we have them training in the back um, to do the PowerPoint or do the projector. And, and I was like, well, it all depends what you think worship is. So let's go back to that question, what's worship? You know, and uh, because in the way that I see it in the Bible is worship is just being like Jesus. So whatever I do inside of the church, you see, I'm, I'm doing it for Jesus. I'm worshiping Jesus. But we put titles, you know, we, and we create these things so that we see Jesus only in the music or we see Jesus only when we sing. So that whenever things doesn't go the way that I thought that they will go, we have these it's like a cold water, you know. It could have happened right now, you know, with that song. I, it didn't go like I thought that it would go. But I don't care because worship is beyond the music. Amen. Worship is being obedient to what God called us to do. And in the moment that we're obedient to be like his son, we worship in the Father. Well, and honestly, worship is everything that we do towards we do it who, you know, to, to who. To who we do it for. So you can be worshiping Buddha. You can be worshiping so many different things. But now what is worshiping the Father? God, the Father. It's being like Jesus. So in the moment that we are just like Jesus, we are worshiping. So 
whatever you call this, it can be season, it can be forever. Whatever you call this, when you are obedient in what you call to do, you're worshiping. Now, if you're disobedient, you're missing worshiping God. You see what I'm saying? So it's more than just music. It's more, and that's not exactly what I'm preaching tonight, but it's part of it. Um, you, you're going to hear worship all the time because that's uh, where my heart goes towards. But in, in ex- Exodus, We have Exodus, what, what, what did I get you to? Exodus 32, 19 to 35, but I'm not going to read all that. Let's go to 24. And say to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they give it to me. And I cast into the fire and... Did the calf come out? Now when Moses saw the people were unrestrained, for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the lower side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi's gathered themselves together to him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord, God of Israel, Let every man put his sword and his side and go into out from the entrance and the entrance through the camp. And let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Father, I ask you that tonight you will give us conviction. And that but when we read this word, Father, we will understand why or what are you trying to speak to us through your word. So, Father, the, the enemy will not be able to distortion anything that I say. That I will just speak what you say in your word. And that we will all come to be united to worship you and to honor you and what you call us to do in this season and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Somebody called me Wero because I walk in like actually with Renee. Where's Renee? But I told her I'm going to go get my sword. And she thought that I was going to go get the Bible. So I literally went to the car and I got my sword. You know, and I brought it over here. Hold on. It's going to go inside my pants. But I brought it over here, see. Uh, and... <laughs> And it kind of it kind of does look weird, oh. yeah, it does. So it's not sharp enough, but I I I I'm, I really believe God wants me to chop out some hair tonight, just like the prophecy that that we got this morning. <laughs> oh, come on now. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's go back to the word. No, and this story, I love it. I love this story. Because it's almost like bringing back to, to the original, you know. And, uh, and uh, they just got, you know, f- free from, from a slavery. They, they seen God power in an amazing way. They crossed the seed. And, and they are now in this, in this position in their life. And uh, uh, Moses doesn't show up for, for a few days because he's talking to God. And they got anxious and desperate. So they talked to Aaron to go and build a God that they were used to it. You know, that's what they were asking. They were asking for a God that they daily see with the Egyptians. So Aaron break in and give them that God, and they honor that God. So Moses comes down and says, like, what in the world? And he asks a question, who are we going to stand for? You know, are we going to stand for the Lord, or are we going to stand for ourselves? Are we going to stand for other gods? And are we going to stand for what? You know, what in the world are we doing? And the Levites, that's the beginning I love to talk about that because that shows you right there at the beginning and what we consider the musicians in the house of the Lord. And the Levites stood up for the first time and, uh, which, you know, and say, we, we stand up for God. Now, God said, okay, that's it, the Lord. Moses said, that's it, the Lord. Go get your sword and chop out your companion. Everybody that didn't stood up for God, which obviously they were companions, wife, husband. They were their kids. Some of them didn't stood up. So imagine God telling you, go chop out their head. And tonight I'm, I'm, I'm speaking this because I believe that that could be happening today. In another way, it is happening today. If 
what we honor in is more than God. We probably need to chop up a couple things in our life. The Bible, the New Testament say, you know, I come to separate you from your father, from your mother. In other words, like, and even say, when Jesus' mother and, and brothers show up at the door and the disciples come in and say, hey, your mom and your brothers are outside. And he say, my mothers and my brothers are those that are honoring the father. In other words, like anybody else, kind of like I chop it out out of my life. So the question is, is like, why do you do what you do for and who do you do it for? In your life, why do you come to church? Why do you come and play? Why do you come and sing? Why do you come and do PowerPoint? Why? Why do you do it? Why do you do it for? And you already have an answer. Why do you teach? Why do you work in a factory? Why? Why do you do it for? Because the question that Moises is, is what are you going to stand for from now on? Are you going to stand for yourself? Are you going to stand for your idols, or are you going to stand for the only God, the true God? So what are you standing for in your life? Only you have the question. Where are you going to stand? And tonight I believe God is saying, okay, I'm going to give you a sword and chop up everything that is taking you away to really honor your God. Whatever it is, is it could be attitude, it could be that now your wife become more important than God. Eh. There you have it. He, he, the, he, listen, he gave his son and all he had. He's such a jealous guy. He wants for him to be a priority. That's why he said, love God with all you have, with all your, with all your soul, with, all, with everything, just love God. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So God wants strictly. So that will take me, you know, against to the beginning of the Bible. How, how did this happen? How did it get from, from, People honoring God and then all of a sudden we're not. And that takes me to the perfect house in Genesis 3. We'll speak us a little about this. Because there's a couple more verses that I want to share with you. Genesis 3, 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast on the field which Lord had got, uh, God made. And he said to the woman... Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we might eat the fruit and the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it. Nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said, <clears throat> excuse me, to the woman, you will not surely die. For God know that in the day you eat of it. Your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing God, good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it. She took of the fruit and ate it. She also gave her husband with her, and he ate it. Before this, there was a perfect house. A perfect house where man and woman was created and everything was created. And he said that God dwelt with man and woman. And he was, it was the perfect house. It was like, if you, you will not even have to talk about worship because the only thing that they knew to worship, it was God. There was a, not another God. There was nothing to be chopped out. But it's so interesting how I got distortion just by listening to a different opinion. Just to see something different that it could be decidable. You know, and why did I'm reading this? I'm going to read another verse in the Bible. And then I'm going to start explaining why and where I believe God spoke to me to, to speak to you about it. And this is going to be in Luke 16. Nine, and I say to you, make friends for yourself by you unrighteous mammon. I don't know what in the world that means, but I know what it means in English, in Spanish. 
that when you fail, they might receive you into everlasting home. Who who is faithful, what is least of faithful also is much. And he who is unjust and what is least is unjust also is much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful to the unrighteous mom, who will commit your truth? Who will trust you with the riches? And if you have not been faithful in what another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or also he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and riches. You cannot serve two masters. And then another word verse that I was wanting to share with you is, a house divided cannot stand. And if I have to talk today about a word that I believe God has put it in my heart, is that one. A house divided cannot stand. And that's why I, I'm going to the beginning. Why? Because God created us and created the world to be just one God, and, and that's it. And we honor only Him. Sadly, the serpent, Satan, knowing this, knowing the faith come by hearing, knowing that the, the, if He speaks to us and convince us, we'll start serving other things. And, 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 and right here in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we will find the same thing. In the Old Testament, we will find that God was more straight up. He said, go chop their head. And why do you think God sent them to chop their head? The New Testament will tell you why. Because a house divided cannot stand. Because we cannot serve two masters. And if we have decided for God, we cannot afford to have other people around us that constantly is putting it against God. Or no knowing they're putting it against God. You know, not long time ago, I was telling Pastor, uh, I, the last time I spoke, and it wasn't the same word, but it, I spoke about the house divided can not stand in Missouri. It's interesting, and I, I'm not hoping that will happen here. But after God, uh, and it was that word and many words, because I'm not trying to say because I speak it, it happened. But we speak in this message in Missouri, in the church, and right after it happened, that, you know, in this church, the, the children pastor got fired. The youth pastor, they, they discovered there were issues, and then he ended up quitting. Myself, I was working in that church. I ended up leaving to Argentina. And it's like, honestly, it's almost like God had to clean a house and start all over again. Richie told me, well, that's not going to happen. You're not going anywhere. And, and, and that's true. I'm not going anywhere. But what I'm trying to say is this is, to me, is so important, okay? What I'm trying to say to this message is, we need to go back to the beginning and check our heart. Everything is in our heart. And, uh, and if we're serving the Lord and everything that we're doing, if we're not doing it with our heart clear, like, and we understand that worship is, is a stand up for Jesus. Worship is a standing up for Jesus in such a way that I, I, I'm being faithful in what is given to me. And that's it. And yes, I have big visions, and yes, I pursue big things. But we need to learn how to be faithful in what it has been given to us. It's another verse in the Bible, and say those that are faithful in the less, in the little things, God will give you more. God will give us more. And sometimes what Satan does, if we don't realize it, he comes and starts speaking to us. And, and try to make us the same thing that he did to the woman and the man. You know, well, you know what, if you do it differently... If you see that these other churches does it differently, and, and they're desirable, and we start seeing more of that than what we have, and, 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 and we stop, literally, we start appreciating what we're doing. We start appreciating what we're having. And all of a sudden, we don't even know how to happen. We're not happy no more. Because we're not happy. In, and let me put something else. You know, many years, when I went to Argentina, I'm going to share part of my life. One of the hardest parts in, in my season with my it with my family was we spent four or five months in Argentina. You need to understand this. Since the year of 2000, God started sp speaking to us about a vision in Argentina. And we went and started the purchasing at nine acres with nine buildings. And that was right, way before I married Shelly, way before I even uh, met Shelly. And uh, so when I met, she met Shelly, one of the first things that I did, I cooked for her and then I showed her the vision of Argentina. Kind of like, if we're going to get married, I want to show you what God called me to do. You know, and uh, so I show her. And, but through all this process, finally God, in the year of 2006, I will say, or seven, God took us, um, maybe more than that, but God took us to Argentina. And we were literally getting ourselves prepared to stay there. 
but because of my citizenship, God brought me back. So to all, through all that process, it becomes one of the hardest times because it was almost we finally left everything to go there. And we were pursuing the vision that God gave me, I guess. And when we got there, God brought us back. So honestly, coming back, I wasn't happy. And now I'm pursuing a vision that obviously my wife is not pursuing anymore. And it's not that she was right or I was wrong. We both become wrong because a house divided cannot stand. And now we both were not pursuing exactly the same thing. I was wanting so desperately to finish my citizenship and get out of here. But literally, God started speaking to me. Damien, you're pursuing more a vision than myself. And I was pursuing more a vision than God. And in other words, Satan didn't show up to me and speak in my ears. Look at the fruit. But he's so deceiving that a vision become my fruit. And that's what happens sometimes inside of these four walls. Our opinion, if we don't take it to the right person. Let's say I have something to say about Richie and I go and talk to Adam about it. What I'm doing is, instead of going and talking to my friend and confronting what I probably think differently, I'm talking to Adam about it. What is happening right now, I'm being like Satan. I'm seeding something in Adam that maybe Adam will be smart enough to correct me or maybe not. But now I'm starting a change of something that I should have from the beginning go with Richie. And that's the way that Satan deceives us. It's like he literally used us to start dividing the house without us even knowing. The children pastor didn't want to do that. The youth pastor didn't want to. I didn't want to do that. I loved the pastor that I was working. I even came. God brought me back to work with him before I came here. So what I'm trying to say is no, no one of us mean to become a house divided. But it happened in the moment that we start pursuing other things. More than realizing where God put us. The season that we are and why we are there for. So the question it is, knowing that God wants you and me to honor God more than anything. What can I do now that way my house will not be divided? Let me give you another example. Why the marriage fails? Well, I went to counseling, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not ashamed of saying it. I sit down to, to let a, my spiritual father to correct me when I need to be correct, and Shelly did the same. And one of the things that we learned quickly, this is what he did. He helped us go back and the things that I should be appreciating. So what can I do for not allowing Satan, for not allowing circumstances, see stuff in my ear that will affect my family, that will affect my church? Go back to understand what you created for, number one. You're creating to honor God. That's it. Love on God. Love God. We were created one, one, it was one perfect house. And until Satan didn't try to distortion with a different way of seeing things, there was one way to see things. So we need to go back. Do you believe in God? Do you believe that Jesus gives his life to you? So everything that you want to do is for Jesus. Well, I want it too. So now... How can we find these things and how can we not allow it? Well, number one in the marriage counseling, what they did for us is write down the things that you love about Shelly. And he told me the same thing. Write down the things that you appreciate, Shelly, that you love of Shelly. So right away, he's, it's so interesting when a marriage becomes an issue, it's become, they start being divided. When a church starts having issues between leadership, it's because something has dividing them. The same thing that happened in the beginning of the Bible. What get us messed up when Satan divides our opinion and it becomes about us instead of about God? So how can we go back to restore our marriage, restore our family, restore everything? Well, you need to go back to not be divided. Something has happened in your marriage, has happened in your church, has something has happened. They take you to start thinking differently. 
thinking different is not bad. The bad thing is whenever we start pulling on what we're thinking differently, and it's pulling away from our marriage, it's pulling away from our friends, it's pulling away from our families. A house divided cannot stand. It will not stand. And that's why God said, go chop off their head. Why? Because they, at the long run, it have improved that they're going to drag you back again. And you guys are going to fail again. So how can I chop up today? Because oh, literally, you cannot go chop up the head of your wife. I know that many of you want to do that. You cannot do that. You cannot chop up the head of your husband. You cannot do that. So how did I do that? How did I do that? You find out where that division starts. How? Let me see in the Bible. How did I do that? First of all, you start being faithful in what you are and what you have. Secondly, I'm going to go Psalms 104. Enter to his gate. How? Being thankful. So what has happened, what happens sometimes, many of the people that we talk, they stop being thankful of being in the projector. They stop being thankful of being in the sound. And something has created anger and divisions. They stop being thankful in just playing an instrument. Now they want more. They're anxious. Nothing bad to want more. But what I realized is my wanting more was affecting my wife and it was affecting my kids. And it was God's vision. It was his vision. We finally, after more than 10 years, we have the nine acres. We have the nine buildings. And we have nobody to run it. Well, now we do, okay? And actually, I'm going with my wife and my kids on December the 5th. We're not moving there. God brought us to Benton. We are in Benton. But God changed this tragedy because he teaching not for me to my focus be a vision, but the everything I do, I do it to honor God. And that's, that's why I'm saying that, that, that you will go back to appreciate the little things. That you will go back to appreciate what you do. If you play an instrument, love God doing that. But what happened, we start seeing that the fruit over there is better than the one that we have. And when we start desiring those things more, you know, men desire another woman. Women start, oh, he doesn't listen to me anymore. So now I have somebody else to talk. And this other man, as ugly as I can be, but at least he listened to me. We start seeing other fruits better than the one we have. So what can we do? Number one, start being thankful. Where you are and what you have. That's what our mentor said. Listen, what do you see in her? Why do you marry her? Why do you marry him? And we put a list. And we start realizing that the enemy have allowed us to focus on the wrong things. And what we don't have. That doesn't mean we don't need to change that. That doesn't mean we don't need to address it. But obviously, if we were not thankful and faithful, like I just read, and the little things, if we were not faithful in what we have, who will trust us with more? So we, he make us go back and be thankful in where we are, what we have. A lot of jumpers, church jumpers, the problem of that is, until they don't find that they need to be thankful. Instead of being looking for something that they will never find. And if they find it, they still need to go back and learn what they were running from. So, but whenever they start being thankful in what they have, thankful in the less, it's awesome because God opened their eyes and said, now I can trust you with more. God brought me to this amazing church in Benton, have my kids in this amazing school. I feel honored to be speaking to the, in chapels. I feel honored to be working with Richie, with Bill, with Trevor, with, with Scott. I, I just, it just, he gave me so much more than I could ever imagine. I didn't see that many years ago. I was so caught up in finally the vision, finally we're there, we're going to touch nation and even prophecy, sometimes you got to be careful because God show you something and then bring you back. And he say, okay, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful. Be thankful, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful, and you get there. But if we just do like, ah, when I get there, I'm there, I'm going to get there. It's like, 
We don't enjoy where we are. We don't learn the steps that we need to go. And the truth is we will never get there. Until they don't go back and be thankful. Marriage, majority of people divorce. It's, it's almost if they don't stop and learn, it's going to happen again. Why? Because we need to stop and be thankful. And if we allow the enemy to deceive us, we keep pursuing the beautiful fruit, the beautiful thing. So how's divided will not stand, cannot stand. So what did I need to do that way I'm not causing this? What, what can I do? Be thankful. Start praising God. Well, number one, be faithful. Faithful where you are, faithful what you do, faithful. Then be thankful. Thankful, 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 thankful. Thankfulness, being thankful of everything will allow you to get in with God, see God, be with God. And then you start praising God for everything. I praise you for my wife. I praise you for my kids. I praise you for my church. I praise you. So what happened is you literally cancel, chop off the head of the enemy and all the things, that even if you think different, even if you right in what you're thinking different. The truth is inside of this wall, inside of this church, God has put a pastor. And the best thing that you can do is either talk to him or shut your mouth and pray. I, I'm just being honest. I, I, you know, the best, thing, the best thing you can do is talk to him or just pray for him. Same thing for your leader, same thing for yourself, same thing for your husband, same thing for your house, same thing for your community. We don't help. You know, that's why Jesus, you know, uh, uh, Jesus gave a format and say, if you have something against Dell, I can use Dell. Go to Dell. Talk to Dell. One at a time. <laughs> and actually it says, go in private. Talk to Dell in private. No, the enemy is like, no, you know, I'm right, so I'm going to talk to him about Dale. You know that Dale, that you eat children, Pastor Mac, goodness. We don't realize that we are allowing this division to kick in, and we don't even want it. I know that you don't want it. I don't want it. So the Bible told me, you know, build up friends that will be when the storm comes. Build up people. That's why the enemy is trying to destroy our friendships. Because if he allowed to destroy our friendships, we will never be honest to each other. We will never progress. We will allow him to destroy us. But if I allow God, I allow that one perfect home, I am going to come to Dale because I love Dale so much that I be Dale. I don't, I just, I have this Dale, you know. And, and if Dale say, you know what, I don't care, get out of my face and I will bring a witness because I still care so much for Dale that I'll be like, come on, let's go talk to Dale. You know, you see the difference. It's all about love. So that doesn't mean that you're not going to progress. That doesn't mean that you're not going to change. That doesn't mean that you need to get stuck and never talk about your issues. Because that's sometimes the old school. It's like, no, you need to just shut your mouth and don't say anything. And respect the anointed. We all anointed. Revelation 1.6 says he make us all priests and kings. But he put a pastor here, he put a leader, and my honor and respect to that person is go talk in private with that person. Make it right. Use a witness. If he doesn't, it doesn't go through, bring two or three more. And if he doesn't go through, expose it to the whole church. And the only reason that that is needed to be happen is the way we change. And the house can be united again. Why did God want those things to happen? Why did God want for us to confront you, uh, you know, on this, you know, as an, as a, uh, I've been working in this church as an associate pastor. My job is to confront you if I see something. And, and if I hear something, I'm, I'm going to come and tell you. Why? Because I love you so much that I want to be united with you and that we all will pursue the vision that God has put in our pastor. If I don't love you, I will not say anything. And not only not said anything, I will talk to somebody else about it. I'll be a gossiper because I don't love you. So you know what? I'm going to talk about you then. 
And what I'm not realizing is a house divided will never stand. It will never. Same thing in your home, same thing in your house. Do you have something? Go talk to your wife. If you are in the point, or your husband, if you're in the point that you cannot communicate, bring somebody else to help you communicate. Because your house is so important that you need to communicate. And a house divided will not stand. Satan will destroy it. So apply those Bible principles. Bring somebody to help you. There is nothing bad to bring somebody to help you. If it doesn't happen that way, bring somebody else. If it doesn't happen that way, bring it to the church. So everybody will help you. There is a step. The Bible is so amazing. There is a manual how to do it. So I want to go back to that question. Moses had to do it in a chop up mode. I think that's the chop up for tonight. Is you asking yourself, why did I do and how did I'm doing it? Everything that I'm doing and I'm honoring the Father, I'm loving the Father. Everything that I'm doing and I'm honoring my wife, I'm honoring my kids, I'm honoring my community. Because if I'm not, the problem is I'm allowing this to be divided. And it will not stand. It will not. It will get to the point that Satan will destroy it. I remember when praying, God told me, Damien, it was one of the hardest moments because we went there, we left our house in Cape, which I was so proud of my wife. She literally left everything. To me, it was easier. I, I, I'm going back to my own country. My wife left house, left everything. We went. And then God changed the plans. We have to come back. We got stuck in a basement in my parents' house. Having a house. Then the house didn't sold. God brought us to Cape. And it was like, I remember those season. And I was like, I was like literally crying out and telling. And, and I learned that I don't tell God why. But in that season, I was like, God, why? I'm doing what you called me to do. I'm, I'm pursuing the vision. And then God make me see my family. Make me see everything. And said, look, you're pursuing those things more than your family. You're pursuing those, even though that I give it to you, I, I didn't give it to you for this to happen like this. And I have to repent. And I say, sorry, God, I'm pursuing things more than you. So now the question is, what are those things that you are pursuing? They're for God? Yeah, that's awesome. But did God put you in that situation right now for you to pursue that more than being faithful in what you have? Are you thankful? Or you have lost that thankfulness because you're seeking something bigger. There's nothing about seeking something bigger. But if you're not thankful in what you have and what you're doing, something is bad. How did I need to fix that? Start being faithful. Start being thankful. Start praising God in everything that you do. Four point, make friends to be honest with each other. Make that friendship that way you can speak. Five point, go to the person. Don't go around the person. Talk to that person. Don't talk about that person with other people. Don't do it. Why? Because then you are being a vehicle of, of division more than that, the helping people. Go to the, if that person don't, li don't listen, bring somebody else. Go to the right person. Ask for, wit, uh, for, for, for wise decision. Do it. I remember in Cape Girardeau, I was a Spanish pastor. And uh, this is specifically community of, community of Hispanic. I will have a lot of people in my office telling me things about other people. So I pull up the Bible and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. From now on, every time that you bring a conversation about somebody else, I'm going to bring that somebody else to this office. And I told them because I imagine that you're doing it for the right reason. You're talking about that person because you love that person. So I'm going to bring that person according to the Bible, and we together are going to talk to that person. You know what happened? I had zero people coming to my office telling me things about other people. Zero. Zip. I give them the benefit of the doubt. I tell them I, I know that you're doing it because you love them. And I know that we do things like that because we love it. You know, we have opinion and all that. But the problem is when we're allowing that opinion 
to help other people look at the bigger picture, at the bigger fruit. She's, he's, the Bible says she saw it, how delicious, how amazing it was. And she's like, ooh -hoo. And the truth is, Satan wasn't literally dying, lying. He was deceiving. He said, you should not die. They didn't die. They spiritually died. Relationship with God was caught. Physically, they didn't die. So some things that you see and I see, they're right. They're true. What you see is right. That doesn't make the making right when we apply it wrongly. God said you should not touch. That's more than enough for me not to touch it. So that's why tonight I want to say, how can we go back? How can we go back to the perfect church, the perfect setup? Isn't you and me? How can I go back to have passion in what I do? You start being faithful and thankful in what you do. I remember I was in Christ for the Nation. And this is another uh, picture that I, we shared with Adam this week in, in this uh, church. Uh, I was, I love worshiping and expressing, you know. So, but they put me to help with the film, you know. And in that time, they didn't have a computers and things like we have now. So, they have that, those film things, okay. I was like, and I was doing that, you know, and, and, and. They have it in the American church, but we were the Hispanics, so we had to pay the price to get the fancy stuff. So we were doing the old things, you know. So, <laughs> so I was doing that thing, and then I got caught up in worship, and what I thought worship was, you know, getting all the spiritual, which is part of it. Because if we read uh, Psalms 100, it starts saying, sing joyful songs to the Lord. But uh, that's, that's just an additive, a way to express worship is being obedient to the Lord. How that I'm obedient to the Lord? Being just like Jesus. So when I'm like Jesus and I'm doing the PowerPoint, uh, and, and this is what I learned that day. I was like, oh, Lord, all the glory. Oh, yes. Oh, I love you. And I was singing to the top of my lung. And all of a sudden, the director touched me. And I turned, and I was like, ooh, I respect this guy. He was wise, man. He will let me do things, and then he will bring me to the office, and he will do the one and one <laughs> He will be, okay, you know, you went all the One time he said this, man, that was awesome, touching heaven. Have you ever heard the phrase, touching heaven, changing earth? And I was like, yeah, I hear the song. And I was like, yeah, you were touching heaven, but you got you to gotta remember where you have your feet, buddy, you know. Touching, when you touch heaven, you got to change your character. You got to be doing your homework. You got to, you know, so if you touch in heaven, I got to see that you're responsible with your homework, that you're responsible. Oh, man. So he will do that often. He will let me get a spiritual, but then he will bring me down to earth and he say, that's awesome, but. And I'm so thankful of his life. He even make me read one proverb a day because I always say, I want to be wise like you. And he said, just read one proverb a day, and the word of God will make you a wise man. You know, and, 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 and it's, it's awesome. So I, I'm, I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. Whatever. So <laughs> let's go back to the film. Okay. So I was doing that thing, and I'm getting so spiritual, and he touched me, and he said, listen, that's awesome. But look what is happening. And I look and say, nobody's singing. And he said, nobody's singing. Don't you think that in, instead of you getting all the spiritual, if you do what you're called to do today, you can help them worship too? And I was like, wow. Wow. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> so it's all in the concept and what I thought worship was. And then I learned the worship is me being faithful, thankful, and praise God in what the task is, either that day, that week, that month, that year. If I'm here like singing beautiful, but I dishonor my pastor as his associate, not doing what he's asking me to do, but in front of you I'm all spiritual, do you think I'm worshiping God? And that's what Moses say. If you look the Levites, what we call the worshipers, why didn't they become the Levites and the worshipers? Right there, standing now for God. 
in such a way that then in Numbers, that's Exodus, Numbers says, because they stood up for me, Moses set them apart, and they will, they are going to minister my presence in my house. So God saw that they were faithful and that they stood up when everybody else was worshiping other things. And because they were faithful, God set them apart to be the ministers in the house of the Lord. So if you and I are faithful to our wife, to our kids, to our, the things, the little things that God gives us, he's going to give you more and more and more. We are thankful. We praise him. And I just want to re read that one. Let's finish that one with this. Numbers 8. And Aaron shall offer the Levite. It's 8.11. And Aaron shall offer the Levite before the Lord like a wave offering from the children of Israel, that they may perform the work of the Lord. What is that? In their occasion, it was everything that happened inside of the house. Everything. The Levites were supposed to do it. Now, you are here, I am here, many of you are doing things here. The question again is, what is in your heart when you do it? Now, if you're not doing things inside your four wall, which I know that you are, there are teachers here that you teach <laughs> awesome worshipers when you're taking care of my kids. That's worship. Satan is going to come and tell you that what you're doing is not as good as what Adam is doing or what Mindy is doing. And what I'm saying is this. Be faithful in what I have been given to you and you have chose to do, okay? Now, if you realize that there are other things that you likely will be doing, then go ask that person, ask the leader that you want to be a part. But in the meantime, don't dishonor what I have been given to you. Not, don't stop being faithful and allow the enemy to start making you think that that is better. That is not better. Learn from it. What is better is where you are. And when you and I are faithful in what he has been given to us, that's the best place. When I'm honoring God and I'm being obedient to God and what he has been given to me. That is what a Levi was. The one that stood up and said, I will stand up for you. Well, then go chop off everything that is making you not stand up for God. If it's your attitude, chop it off. If it's chop it off, chop it off, chop it off tonight, chop it off tonight. Chop it off. Let the Holy Spirit give you conviction and all those things. Chop it off. Whatever it is, people talking to you about uh, anybody else, you chop it off. And say, buddy, I can't listen to you. Go talk to him. Chop it off. Because the Bible says we cannot serve two lords. We cannot do this anymore. Are we going to stand up for God or not? Now, if you're not in this house, let me tell you, you are in your house. You're a husband. You're a wife. You have children. You're a teacher. You work in factories. Sometimes that's the thing. We see the big picture. The enemy have deceived us that that's better. And now we are in the factory and we're not happy no more. Why did I do it in this factory? I'm telling you why you can be do. You can be thankful when you're making those diapers that they're going to be used by my child. I was talking about practicing gamble, but it's all good. Okay, so we lose that thankfulness, and the enemy have deceived us. But whenever we go back to that, we're, we're going to be the best people working in gas station. We're going to be right there where you are just by being thankful. You're going to enter to his presence. Just by praising him, you're going to be with God. You're going to start being an influence right there in your home. You're going to start showing your husband that you love him. You're going to start seeing why you love your husband. You're going to start seeing why you love your wife. You're going to start seeing why you're working there. You're going to start being an influence now. That being Instead of, you know, allowing the enemy to influence you and be unhappy. And always, oh man, I choose the wrong profession. You know, I wish I was a lawyer. I wish I was a doctor. I wish I was this. I wish I was that. No, I am here today. I'm thankful that I'm here today. I'm praising God that I'm here today. I'm going to be faithful in what I have been given to me. And because of that, I'm going to walk with God. And because I walk with God, everything that I touch will be blessed. Everything that I bless will be blessed. Everything that I pray will have answers. Why? Because I'm thankful. And I have chosen that I will not allow division to get in my heart. I'm not going 
can't allow any bad opinion from everybody. And if I have allowed it, I'll repent. And if I repent, I'm going to start walking differently with my God. Why? Because I'm thankful. I'm thankful of my wife. I'm thankful of my kids. I'm thankful of my church. I'm thankful of my worship leader. I'm thankful that there are people that work with me. I'm thankful. I'm thankful of everything. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to come and tell me that a better fruit is at the door. The best fruit is the one that I'm eating right now. Today in this place, there is not a better place. There is not a better place that I want to be. There is not a better place that I am today. Oh yes, I want revival. I'll tell you what, I'm living in revival. Why? Because I have chosen to be thankful. Yes, I might be one in a miracle here, a miracle day. But in the meantime, I'm thankful of all the things that he already gave me. I'm thankful of what he gave me. I'm thankful of the, one, the things that he has not given me yet. Because the Bible said that even discipline is for those that he loves. So you know what? When I look at God, I'm going to say to God, God, thank you. Because I trust you more than myself. I trust you more than myself. And because I trust you, I'm thankful to you. I'm thankful because you know better than me. You know better than what I need. You know better than what I want. You know better than what I feel. And because of that, I'm thankful to you. So let's just stand up and come. It's, I'm going to ask the worship team to come. Just chop up everything they have take the joy out of you. Just chop everything they have take the joy. And run to those people that you feel that the enemy have distortion between you and them. Restore that in private. If you have something against them, they'll come in private. One at a time, like he said. But come in private. Come in private, talk to them. Because we're not going to allow the enemy to present a better picture. There is not a better picture than what you, a, a picture than what you already have. If you're married, you have the best wife. You have the best husband. Right there is by you. That is not true that there's another better one. You have it with you. You have it with you. That's what God gave you. Love on her. What happened is the enemy have deceived you enough to make you think the other things are better. Now, be thankful of what you have. It's awesome to make goals, but allow that that goal start today and being thankful. We're approaching Thanksgiving. Make a Thanksgiving every day of your life. Look at your wife and say, baby, I love you. So I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Instead of focus, oh, I wish she cooked this instead of this. Thankful. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. And I thank you so much that I'm going to serve you. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. So come on tonight and just allow the Holy Spirit to help you chop up everything that, that is not standing for God today. Anything, attitude, anything. Chop up everything tonight. Chop it up. Chop it up. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. So, Father, I pray tonight, I pray that your word will become so real in our hearts. And that whatever it is, if we have allowed, and I'm not saying they have already happened, but I believe that it's a warning to all of us that we will not allow for our house to be divided. Our marriages, our friends, our church, our work. So give us a conviction right now. What are the things that we can make better for you and honor you? That as we come and serve you and whatever we're doing, that we will have again that happiness when we do it. <laughs> you are the answer.